Ultimate car buying scams. Thinking of buying a new car? Then you're probably like most consumers, afraid and anxious about being ripped off by a car dealer. And your fears are well justified. Consumers in the U.S. lost over $30 billion each year to car buying scams, many of which are easily avoidable, while others may require a little expert help. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and across the way is the always amazing Elizabeth. Thanks, Kevin. In case you're new here, Kevin and I worked inside car dealerships and got to experience car dealership bad behavior firsthand. Since then, over the last several years, we've made it our mission to research how car dealers work, and we have documented tons of scams and tactics used throughout the industry. To any car salesman out there who's tempted to say, these are all outdated, nobody does this stuff anymore, well, Kevin, take it away. To that I say, it's great if the dealership you're working at doesn't do this stuff anymore, but with the launch of our hassle-free car buying service, we have daily contact with dealers as we represent car buyers all around the country. We know a ton more about the entire car industry than any salesman working at one dealership does. The real reason that even we end up avoiding certain dealers is that they turn out to be nothing but con artists. Today, we're going to help you know how to identify them. Also, you should know that you avoid the agony of all of these scams by hiring us to provide you with our hassle-free car buying service. We have the best service by far, and we don't post a bunch of fake reviews for what we do either. We leave the fake tactics to our competitors out there. Well, friends, of course not all car dealers are bad, but it can be a difficult task to figure out which ones are truly honest. Our goal today is to expose the tricks used by the worst offenders so you don't end up becoming another uninformed victim. $30 billion a year is a lot of money, friends. To help determine the risk level of some of these scams, we have rated them on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest risk. The number we've given each scam reflects a combination of how costly it is, how common the occurrence is, and even how likely it is for consumers to fall victim to the scam. Today we're focused on new car scams. Used car scams will come in a follow-up show. We're starting at risk level 4, which is bad, and it ends up getting a whole lot worse. First up at level 4 are nitrogen-filled tires. The risk level has dropped down recently because more and more dealers are discovering that informed car buyers are refusing to pay for this nonsense. You got it. Well, the idea is that if you fill your tires up with pure nitrogen, they will stay inflated for longer and the rubber will degrade slower than if you fill it with regular air. But air is already 78% nitrogen, and over time as you top up your tires, they will become richer in nitrogen anyways as the oxygen molecules slowly escape. But there's no chance nitrogen fill will be worth doing for even $20, much less $400 like dealers often want to charge for it. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Sitting at risk level four as well, Tricking you into signing a lease. This is a lowered payments game. You're looking to buy a car, but you say the payments are too high. The salesman says, if we can get the payments lower with no cash down, will you buy today? The problem is they are putting you into a lease instead of a purchase. Some buyers get bumped into a lease without even being aware of it. The salesman may refer to it as a balloon payment. All we can say is that you must pay close attention to the agreement and make sure that you are not signing a lease. This scam works mainly on people who are tired and in a hurry and simply aren't paying enough attention. At risk level 5 is a real classic, negotiating on the wrong vehicle. A dealer will mislead consumers by giving you pricing on the wrong vehicle. For example, you may think you're negotiating for a 2023 model. Turns out the dealer was negotiating based on a 2022 model, a year older and with more miles. In rare cases, this could be a legitimate error on the part of the salesman, but if you suspect they're doing it on purpose, take your business elsewhere. You can help avoid this problem by requesting a VIN and then using a professional advice service like our help desk to look up the VIN and verify that this vehicle is what they're claiming it is. Also at risk level 5, dealers say manufacturer rebates are only good at MSRP price. Bullshit. (laughs) The dealer will try to convince an unsuspecting buyer that cashback rebates from the manufacturer are only good if you pay MSRP for the vehicle. The Ah. truth is, manufacturer rebates are independent of whatever price you negotiate with a dealer. Don't allow them to factor in rebates when negotiating the price of the new car. Those get deducted at the end when price negotiations are done. Sitting at risk level 6, besides hiding other things, dealers are known for hiding dings, scratches, and other flaws, yes, on new cars too. Especially now with inventory busting at the seams, dealer lots can have plenty of tight spaces, which could easily result in accidents, scratches, and dings on your new car. Even if the car is new, always inspect the vehicle for damage before agreeing to buy it and then driving it off the lot. 
Also at risk level number six, stealing your rebate. Mm. Sometimes manufacturers offer multiple consumer rebates and incentives on one model, and car shoppers may not be aware that they qualify for all of them. If the rebates you qualify for are not shown on your car contract, you'd better believe the dealer is still going to cash in on that rebate and pocket the money themselves. Unfortunately, this lack of transparency creates an opportunity for dealers to take advantage of you in this situation. And as I pointed out, the dealer will try to keep some of these rebates for themselves. You might wonder, how is this possible? Unfortunately, dealers can get away with it because manufacturers don't audit every single sale at a dealership. To cover your bases, call at least two or three local dealers and ask them to list all the rebates and incentives on a particular model. If you're looking at the same car, make sure all the dealers list the same number and dollar value of the incentives. At risk level seven, charging a deposit to hold the vehicle for you. I get asked this all the time. Dealers try to get a deposit to hold or find a car for you. This is usually done on high demand, low supply vehicles that are hard to find, right? Yet the only time a dealer should legitimately ask for a deposit is if they're doing a dealer trade on your behalf. Don't leave a deposit unless you've asked the dealer to do a dealer trade. If you agree to leave a deposit, make sure it's not over $500 and that it's fully refundable. If you agree to hold money down, always do it on a credit card. If a problem occurs later, your card company will help you get that money back. Dealers are notorious for trying to keep consumer deposits when a deal falls through. Man, I hear that one every day. Sitting at risk level 8 are theft protection systems. Dealers love to scare you into thinking your car will be stolen the moment you buy it. But trust us <laughs> when we say that not one employee in the entire dealership will have these bogus theft protection systems installed on their own car. True. Well, so goes the alarm. The dealer claims about this product are ludicrous. They say the police use these theft systems to find your car if it's ever stolen. That's totally false. Ask any police officer in your community about window etching, for example, and they often have no idea what <laughs> it is. They have no idea. Yet, dealers would have you believe that these systems are so common that they are taught in police academy. It's been several years ago that we called window etching the scam of the decade, but that still doesn't stop dealers from still trying to sell it. Topping the list at number one of new car scams are confusing window stickers. This one earns a risk level of eight because we've seen dealers pull this so often Everyone is aware of what a Monroney window sticker is, right? right? It's the official window sticker from the manufacturer. It is not supposed to be removed or tampered with. So here's what happens. The dealer displays a dealer sticker next to the official MSRP sticker. It's what's commonly known as an addendum sticker. It is purposely designed to look official, but its only purpose is to fool buyers into paying more for the vehicle. The dealer added sticker will include options that were installed after the car arrived on the dealer lot from the manufacturer. They're usually worthless and some aren't even options at all, but simply made up charges. For example, you might see things like special value package, which includes fabric protection or charges labeled ADP or ADM. Interestingly, this is an offense hiding in plain sight because ADP and ADM acronyms stand for additional dealer profit and additional dealer markup to add insult to injury, right? They are generally always completely worthless, and some are fake fees. The good news is that you can easily learn how to spot a fake dealer fee. This begs the question, why do dealers do this? Interestingly, contrary to what many people think, dealerships don't actually make most of their profit on the sale of new cars. The car is simply a product to be sold that unscrupulous dealers find a lot of ways to add tons of other stuff to. Sure. The fact is that most dealers make more profit selling you add-ons than they do on the price markup of the vehicle. Car dealerships are just like any other competitive business, and they can and most often will try to maximize these profits in any way they can. The law requires that each new vehicle display a MSRP sticker listing the price of the car plus all the options and a destination charge from the manufacturer. A pro tip right here. The fact that a destination charge from the manufacturer is right on the window sticker clearly demonstrates that a destination charge is already charged in the MSRP. Do not let a dealer itemize it and charge you twice for it. Dealers cannot alter the window sticker in any way. If they are caught, doing so can result in huge penalties. The vast majority of dealers comply with this law, but some will try to confuse you by adding their own window sticker, so to speak, next to the official sticker. If you haven't taken the time to read the FTC's article on tying the sale, you must do it before you go looking at cars, as you'll learn this practice is illegal. Once you learn that tied selling is illegal, you'll never get burned on forced dealer addendums or add-ons again. 
Also, if you never want to miss an upcoming show, while you're visiting on our website, thehomeworkguy.com, sign up for show notifications directly from us by clicking on the yellow button for content notifications. I send out a reminder email for all new shows, which you can check out yourself and also forward to family and friends. For those of you wanting to skip all the nonsense we talked about today, I look forward to speaking with you directly about our hassle-free car buying service. It's easy to find at thehomeworkguy.com. Nobody ever regrets going this route. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to our longtime followers, you guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the Homework Guy team. God bless you all. Thanks for listening. 